Hey everyone and welcome to 2026. The new year is always the perfect time to recap the last 12 months and see what's coming next. And 2025 was the first year where people really globally adopted AI for coding and design and 2026 won't be any different. So today we'll take a look at how those early AI designs looked, what the current baseline is and how you can make your website stand out using different compositions, different types of motion and animations, different materials, fonts and wildcards. Let's get to it. To really understand where we are going next, we first have to look at where we've been and early 2025 introduced tons of AI generated designs that all started to feel pretty similar. And I've asked Paul to recreate it so we can pinpoint the usual suspects. My prompt was create a landing page that embodies everything wrong with the early 25 AI design. We are talking about the specific default aesthetics. Uh, we have heavy gradients everywhere. We have those rigid cookie cutter grids and we have the overuse of emojis. And you'd see the same repetitive sections and layouts over and over again. The same four items, the same pricing, the same customer testimonials, same CTA, and the same footers everywhere. And don't get me wrong, it was a great starting point for getting things online quickly, but it created a landscape where everything looked like it came from the exact same template and not a really aesthetically pleasing one. Fast forward to today though, and it's a whole different story. You can type in a simple one sentence prompt and immediately get a result that is really good. The new models, and especially Opus 4.5, have gotten so much better at understanding structure and design that the starting point is just miles ahead of where we were. Now, when we look at this landing page, it's just a simple prompt. I didn't provide Bolt with any images, any content for this website. And it's, it's, it's just a really good landing page for a personal portfolio. We have those nice animations on hover. We don't have this rigid grid that we had before. We have a little shift between left and right column and the rounded corners. So it does give this website a more dynamic feel. We have the form at the bottom. And again, when we hover over those buttons, we have those really nice animations here. And again, this is just a single prompt. So if that's our new baseline, the real question becomes, how do we actually make our own website stand out? First way to make your website stand out, and I don't think it's going anywhere in 2026, is adding a video background in your hero section. It immediately sets the tone and the atmosphere, and it's really eye-catching, and it just looks quite cool. And it's actually easier than you might expect. So to create this sort of video as a background in your Bolt project, you first need to create the video. And my workflow is that I usually start with Midjourney, and this is a random image I've created a few weeks ago. Then I take this image, go to Gemini, and with VO 3.1, I create a video for myself. So I add a quick description. In this case, I just wanted the clouds moving ever so slightly. You can see in the original video, the clouds are actually moving a bit more than I would like them to, but it's not a big deal. I can download this video, I can put it into any video editing software, make it go a bit more slow-mo. Then I go back to my Bolt project. I usually go into code. I create a public folder. I add a background file to that folder. I just ask Bolt to use this video as the background of the hero section. And there we have it, a really cool video as a background of our hero section. Staying around the topic of motion, it doesn't have to be a video in the background. It can be a bit more abstract or very abstract as in this case. So here I have a custom shader from a paper design app. And then the second example, I have this waves react component from react bits. That's not only moving uh, in the background, but it also reacts to our cursor movements. So how do you import those cool backgrounds into Bolt? So in case of this one, I go to the paper, paper design app and here I have a lot of shaders to choose from. So I have image filters, I have logo animations and effects. I'm usually focusing on effects and I've picked a bunch of them here for you to see. And many of them, they have a lot of customization options. So we have our presets, so you can change it to wave, dots, blob. In our case, we just stuck with the default one. And the very cool feature of this app is that when you right click on it, you can copy 
this background as Tailwind or as React CSS. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. You just copy the code, you paste it right here into Bolt, and it will import this background perfectly for you. Then you can iterate on this background, obviously, by talking to Bolt more, changing it yourself in code. In one of the previous videos, I told you how you can do that. Uh, you can find this component and just change the numbers here, uh, the colors as well, to edit how this component works. And it's actually much easier than you think it is. Uh, it's super simple. But that's how you can get the shaders into your Bolt project. It's a very similar story with the React component. You go to the original website, you usually have the code over here. You copy this code. I usually go with TypeScript and Tailwind. You copy the snippet, you paste it here inside your Bolt project. And usually after a first try, sometimes it takes two, uh, you're gonna have your component perfectly imported here as the background. Then you can again iterate on it in the same way. You can obviously edit all the sections with this super cool component as a background. And again, as with the video, it's gonna set up the tone for your website and make sure it really stands out. Another way to make your website stand out in 2026 is to surprise your user with the composition because for years, the standard was edge to edge design trying to fill every pixel of the browser. But look at the difference here. By pulling the edges in and wrapping the experience in this container, we completely change the vibe. It stops feeling like a flat web page and starts feeling like a premium object or even like a cinema screen. So in 2026, don't be afraid of empty space. We can scroll a bit down and you'll see a lot of empty spaces here, here, and obviously on the edges of the entire uh, web page. And that's perfectly fine. By constraining our content, we actually give it more importance. It almost becomes like a window looking into a world rather than just a flat document on the screen. And while we are in this project, I want to talk about something I think is going to become a trend in 2026, so designing directly in the code. So in the past, you'd have designer go into Figma, prepare three to five different versions of the same project, and then you have to pick, based on the flat files usually, which one you want to develop. Then you give it to the developer, they code it, and then if all went well, you pick the best option, and it's great. But in many cases, you have second thoughts, maybe actually the other design was better. But now, in 2026 with Bolt, you can design it directly in the code. And what I mean by that is after you have your first iteration and you kind of like it, but you want to see some alternatives, you can ask Bolt to keep the same aesthetic and the similar vibe, but iterate on it a bit more. And I have this small switcher when I've asked Bolt to create some other options. So here we have our container with the rounded corners. And another alternative is that on the left and right hand side, we have subtitles about our content that's changing dynamically depending on the section we are in. And that also feels pretty cool. But I've also asked Paul to change the footers of each of those options. So we can go to original option where I really like the footer already, but then we have this alternative, which I think it's okay, but then we have the third one, which I really, really like. So even though I was happy with the original footer that Paul prepared for me, I like this one even more. So whenever you have your project and you feel kind of happy with it, you can still ask Paul to iterate on it and suggest alternatives. If it fails, you can go back to the original one, either just go here or with the version control, you can go back to the original design, but give yourself a chance to see which one you like better and it gives you a bigger chance to actually make your website stunning, make it stand out even more and surprise your users. Now let's talk about the surface itself and how we can make it stunning. So I think in 2026, we're gonna see a rise of liquid glass, liquid metal, and all those almost real life components, but made premium for the UIs in all sorts of landing pages and to some extent in the apps as well. So in this example, I've imported the liquid metal shader again from the paper design app, copied the code, imported it into Bolt and tried it out with a bunch of different components. And it feels 
really nice to use. It feels very premium and I've tried it out with different options. For this one, for example, it was a bit much. For the settings, I think it works really nice. And then let's say if you'd like to use it in the app, you could use it, for example, in the analytics dashboard. But first and foremost, the dashboard should be readable and it should be really easy to get the data from it. So if you really want to use, let's say, liquid metal or liquid glass in the dashboard, I would just stick with small elements that won't mess up with readability of the data. And if we go to another example, here I've used this glass button. When you hover over it, it feels like it sort of clicks already. So it has this very tactile feel. So I think in 2026, we're going to see a rise of almost real life materials uh, and the UIs. And we kind of want to achieve this feel when we are building a physical object that lives inside the screen. And with Bolt and with all the external resources available for you, it's quite easy to add those into your website. Another thing you can do in 2026 to make sure your website stands out is to experiment with font and color scheme. So in most cases, when you ask AI to create a landing page for you, it's going to pick one of the maybe five different fonts and a pretty safe color scheme in most cases. So to stand out, you can try out all the different fonts and there are so many cool fonts that will change the vibe of your landing page immediately. And obviously, if not more, the same goes for the color scheme. We go to midnight, it's different landing page. We go to forest, it's a different landing page. We go to slate, another landing page. And when you change the color of the font itself, and you can also change the font weight, you can change the line height, you can just make sure that the design you've picked and the color scheme you've picked and the font you've picked is the best one for the specific project. And it ties to this designing in code. Bolt makes it so easy for you to try out all those different options that it would be a crime not to try out all the different possibilities that it opens up before you. Now, the cool part is that we can combine all the elements we've talked about today. So here, before we focus on the shader and the background, but the composition of this hero section is also not very typical because we have navbar center aligned, we have this section left aligned, and we have logo section right aligned. And we did it because in the background, those prominent elements are in the bottom left and top right corner, which naturally creates this diagonal axis. And when you look at the navbar surface, it's actually this glassy surface. So when this element moves towards the middle, it really changes how the navbar looks and it gives this almost magical, really cool feel. Now, when we move to another project we've created today, here we've changed the static background image into a video. And I think this one looks even cooler. And because we have our switcher here, we can see how it looks and all the different options we've prepared before with the same video. So as you can see, you can combine all the different options. You have to be careful with them to not overload the users with all the visual elements. But if you combine them well, you can be 100% sure your website is going to stand out in 2026. So now you are officially ready for 2026 and you know how to make your website absolutely stunning. I've left some of my favorite resources, workflows and prompts in the description below so you can start experimenting yourself. Happy New Year, happy building, and I'll see you in the next one.